What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes. In this video, we're gonna be creating a basic shopping cart in React by using Apollo Client. So the functionality behind the application is pretty simple. We have four different items and we can choose to add these items to our cart. You'll see if you add an item to your cart, you can also remove the item from your cart. It might seem simple, but there's a lot of interesting, cool things happening in the background. For example, when I have Cooper Code's channel and shoes in my cart, check this out. I have a cart items, which is being cached in my Apollo client. And we're actually making a query to constantly update this cart items object. And look, I have access to every single property of the item in my cart through Apollo client. Another interesting subtle thing about this application is that we have these React components for each item. For example, these shoes. If these shoes are not in our cart, it's going to show add to cart. This is because this React component is looking at our Apollo client cache and making unique decisions based off of what is in the cache. Although it's simple, this is really powerful technology and can apply to a bunch of different projects. If you're a beginner when it comes to Apollo client or you're looking to understand Apollo client caching more, or if you're even a beginner to React, this is gonna be a great project for you to make some real functionality with your React web page. All right, so let's get started with the code. All right, so we can get started by going to an empty folder in whatever text editor you prefer to use. This video is gonna use Visual Studio Code. So I'm gonna open up our terminal to this folder and I'm going to npx create react app and I'm going to name this app just client. For this video, we're going to use Chakra UI to make a very basic grid component. So I'm going to npm install all the libraries they suggest here. So we're going to cd into the client folder so we're inside our React application. And then we can npm install all the Chakra UI required libraries. And we're also going to want to install at Apollo slash client for everything Apollo client related. I'm gonna start this tutorial by taking a look at the source folder and going under index.js. So I'm gonna get started by setting up our Apollo client. So we can import Apollo client and also Apollo provider from at Apollo slash client. And we also need a provider to give our application access to the Chakra UI stuff. So we need to import Chakra provider from at chakra UI slash react. This video is going to use an extremely simple client. I'm going to just say const client is equal to new Apollo client. So we're initializing our Apollo client and then we're gonna pass in an options object, which is going to give us access to kind of personalize our Apollo client. I'm going to set a URI just to localhost 4000. In this video, I'm not going to be using an external backend, but you can just have this URI here. So if you wanted to eventually make a backend of localhost 4000, it could work with that as well. The main focus of this video is that we are going to be creating a custom cache for our Apollo client. So I'm gonna set cache equal to custom in memory cache. And this is something that we are going to create. So this is not defined yet. And we're gonna create it after we set up these providers here. So let's take the Apollo provider and we are pretty much giving our application access to Apollo by creating this provider and wrapping it around our entire application. And the exact same thing happens with the Chakra provider as well. And so providers are pretty common format for a lot of React UI related things. And so this is a good example of using multiple providers at the same time. As long as the providers are outside of your app, you'll see Apollo provider eventually gets to our app and chakra provider is also kind of wrapped around our app. And the interesting thing is that it doesn't really matter the order of your providers because they generally aren't relying on each other. So you guys could even try for yourselves seeing chakra provider on the outside, Apollo provider on the inside. It's still going to work because all this happening is your app is saying, okay, I want to use Apollo client and it's going to get access to that through the Apollo provider here. Okay. So our providers are set up and now we want to make this custom in memory cache. And so I'm actually going to save our caching logic to a different JavaScript file, and I will explain why. So let's just make a cache.js here. And the main reason why we want this cache to be in a separate JavaScript file is we are going to have a bunch of different variables that our cache has access to. And these variables are called reactive variables. So we can make an example reactive variable by saying const cart items variable is equal to make var. Visual Studio is gonna do some autocomplete to help me out, but we can import make var from Apollo client here. 
And we're also going to import in memory cache as we do that. And this make var is how you create a reactive variable in Apollo client. Reactive variables seem kind of strange, but they're what help us create kind of unique functionality to our cache. The easiest way to think about a reactive variable is this. If we call cart items var like this, this is going to return the current value of the cart. If we call cart items var with let's say an array of item one, item two, item three, it's then going to set the cart items var to the array. So in this case, it'd be array one, two, three. This is just a simple explanation of the cart items var because we only use one of them in this video, but you can create a bunch of different reactive variables that will make your Apollo client way more interesting to work with and allow you to create different functionality. So I'm actually gonna delete these little examples here. So hopefully that was some good learning there. Now we can define our in-memory cache. So I'm gonna say const custom in-memory cache is equal to a new in-memory cache from Apollo client. An interesting thing about the in-memory cache is that we can actually query the cache directly instead of querying just our server. And so we can define what some queries just to our cache will look like by doing something like this. We can say type policies. We want certain functionality for certain types. The type that we want unique functionality for is going to be of query. So we want the query type to have certain functionality. And we also want some fields here. What fields are we passing to the query? Well, we can have cart items be the name of how we get data out of our cache specifically. So if we were to query our Apollo client specifically, it would look something like this. And this is kind of just pseudocode. Don't take anything word for word here, but we would have our query. And inside of our query, we would reference cart items and we would ask for that value to be replaced by what is in our client. And so this is what it means by fields is we are in the query and what fields in the query do we need to kind of have a value? Well, we want cart items to have a value. And how do we determine the value of cart items? Well, we can pass in a read function, which is a property that we can define. We can say, okay, if we ever read cart items from a query, just like this at line 23, we can return the value of the cart items var we have at line six. This allows us to access client data through local GraphQL queries, which I know sounds like a lot, but we'll see a bunch of examples during this video. So we can kind of wrap this example up by exporting both the cart items var and the in-memory cache. It's important to understand that export means that if we were to call cache.js in a different JavaScript file, we have access to cart items var and custom in-memory cache. There are use cases where you want access to the in-memory cache. For example, when we define it in index.js in a second, but there are also examples where let's say we want to actually change the value that this make var references. If we export this cart items var, we can use this throughout our React application to change its value or see its current value instead of having to do a query like this. And like I said previously, we will see actual examples of working with these, but I'm just giving a general overview. Let's go back to our index.js so we can actually define this custom in memory cache. So over in index.js, you're going to want to import custom in memory cache from dot slash cache. And so we can get rid of this not defined yet comment if you guys copy that too, because now it is defined. And let's npm start our React application just to see what it looks like right now and to make sure we didn't mess anything up. Cool, so we have the boilerplate React application with nothing being, you know, no errors are being logged in our console, which is great. Let's get into creating the very bare bones kind of structure of the components we're gonna be using for this video. All right, so let's head on over to our app.js. I'm gonna get rid of all these items in the middle here. So keep the div and the header. I just kind of like to keep them for general styling, um, especially because this video is significantly more focused on the Apollo client side. And so I'm going to make the very basic code for our store. So I'm just gonna copy over this const that's going to represent four different JavaScript items for our store items to use. So these are gonna be the four different items in our store. I'm gonna put a link in the description. It's going to say store items and it'll be like a paste bin or something. So you guys don't have to write this all out and you'll just paste this in right here. This array is going to allow us to load in store items dynamically. So you guys could even have way more items in your store, way less items in your store. It's all going to work, which is kind of the beauty of React components. So we can start at the top here by importing the grid from Chakra UI React. 
we're gonna pretty much use the grid to make all of our store items load in nicely. All right, so let's go down to the bottom here. I'm going to do a little header one just to say, welcome to my store. Then I'm just gonna do little breaks here. And then after this welcome to my store, I'm then going to do an H2, which is going to say store items. So these are going to be the actual items in our store. We are then going to use the grid from Chakra UI, and we're going to use a property that is going to help us out a bunch, and it's called template columns. We can ask how do we want the columns of our front end to repeat, and we can do that by saying repeat two comma one fr. This is pretty much going to give us two columns. If you're not interested in CSS, I wouldn't worry about this too much. Then I'm also going to add some gap between our columns. I'm just gonna make it six, it'll look nice. And then we can go to store items, which is the const that we defined above here at line five, and we can map through these items. Map allows us to go through every single element in the array and then pretty much make a callback function that does unique data to that object. So I can say, this is the current item we're on. And then this arrow is saying, I want to define this function as this code. So we're gonna put some code at line 41. For now, I'm just gonna say, let's see, item dot name. So it's not gonna look very good, but this is just showing that we're dynamically loading in the data. So let's go back to our localhost 3000 and make sure to NPM start if you're not already there. Oh, my bad guys. And I'm actually gonna leave this in because I think it's a mistake you guys can learn a lot from. We're not actually defining any code in this map statement. And so these curly braces should actually be regular circle braces like this. The reason is that we're not defining any code. And so these circle braces or parentheses, whatever you want to call them, they're just going to define what actual React element do we want to show to the web page. We're not doing any actual JavaScript code, which you would need with curly braces. Instead, we're just directly returning what we want to return, which is the paragraph with an item name. So now let's look at localhost 3000. You can see we already kind of have a store, which is amazing. So what it's doing is it's loading in one at a time. Make a paragraph here with Cooper Code's channel, make a paragraph here with item name, paragraph here with Bitcoin, paragraph here with JavaScript. Just to clear up any confusion, yes, they're not exactly being rendered as paragraphs because we're in this header class name. It's just because I'm lazy with styling and the header class name, first of all, gives us a nice dark background so you don't have to look at that. And it also centers the items as well. So that's nice. And so now that we have some items to look at, we need to kind of think about our process one step at a time. So I'm gonna make some steps here for things that we kind of need to get done. The first step is we need to make a cart. The second step is instead of just rendering these paragraphs, we want to render actual item components. So you can like buy and sell a certain item, for example. So we are going to start by creating a cart component. So I'm going to go over to our source folder and I'm going to create a cart.js. So to start off our cart.js, we're not even gonna get into any React code. We're gonna to want to create a query to get the current items that are in our cache. For example, we want to see what is the variable value of cart items var. We can get that value by creating a query to our client specifically. So let's start by importing GQL because we're gonna make a GraphQL query and then also use query, which is a React hook that's going to help us actually call the query we make. It's gonna be coming from Apollo client and we can now define the query here. So we can say const get cart items, I think is a solid name, is equal to GQL, then some back ticks. We're then going to define the full query here by saying query get cart items, which I'm going to have return cart items and then importantly, at client. And so just to explain the full process of what's going on here, we're defining a query at line four and we want this query to get the cart items from our client. So that's what this query is returning. And how does our code know? Cause we haven't really defined a query. We have no resolvers is something you might be saying, right? It's because this cart items gets resolved by what we defined over in our cache. It gets resolved over here. When we say, okay, if we query and we have a field named cart items, give this value for that field. Pretty neat, right? And so this is actually going to give us whatever the value is for the cart items var, because we know that from line 14 right here. All right, so let's get into creating the actual functional component for cart. I'm just going to export default cart to start. This allows us to use this component anywhere else in our React application. And I just like to get out of the way early first. 
we can call our query by saying const use query and then get cart items. Use query gives us access to a bunch of different things. For example, if something is loading or not, if the query is loading or not, if the query has errored out, so we can have the error and also the data that we're getting back from the query, which is gonna be important for our case. We can then make some if statements. So if the loading object exists, I can return loading cart. We're probably not gonna experience the loading ever happening, but it's good to know it exists just cause it's client side and it's almost instant, right? But you might get an error in this situation, there's probably not going to be an error, but if you're making a different thing and using your own thing, check for the errors. Um, and we can return a paragraph here saying error, error dot message. And this could be an error in how you wrote your query as well. So it'll let you know that here. Then we can return the actual component if we got this far. I'm going to wrap this whole return statement in a React fragment here. This just makes things easier when we develop some more complicated logic on the inside. And so I'm gonna do a little H4 here and I'm just gonna say my cart. And so now we can do some logic using a ternary statement. So we can say if data exists, so we wanna make sure data is here just to double check that. Then we can do an ampersand to say and data.cart items. So this cart items we're getting at line five dot length is equal to zero. We can then do a question mark, which means if this is true that we have a length of zero, we can then give React a certain element. For example, a paragraph saying there are no items in your cart. Importantly though, we can say else. That's what the colon is in this ternary statement is it is an else statement. So otherwise, what does that mean? It means that there are items in your cart. And so we can make a little unordered list here. Um, I'm just gonna use style equals list style of none. So we get rid of any bullet points. And we can then map the data that we received from our cart items array. This is actually the second time we've used map in this video, which is pretty neat. So you guys are getting a lot of familiarity with that. I'm just gonna do data ampersand just to you know, really safeguard us from getting rid of that error where it's like, for example, data.cart items doesn't exist or like it's undefined. We don't want that error. So on the left side, we can always make sure data exists before we execute the right side. And so I can say data.cartItems.map I can take the current item in our cart and I can show it off to the user. And again, like I talked about before, we're using the parentheses because we're going to directly return something for our React to look at. For example, a list element, and I'm just going to show the item.name. And React wants all lists to have a key. And the good thing is that all of our different items have ID. So I'm just gonna say key is equal to item.id. When using map, you can also get access to the index alongside the item. So you can also use the index as a common one, but we have item IDs, so we might as well use it for the key here. And so this is gonna be our full cart component. If there's no data from querying our local client, it's going to say there are no items near cart. If there is data from querying our cart items here, we are then going to display that data to a user using an unordered list and having each item be shown with just a simple item.name. Before we wrap up this component, I'm also just going to console.log data. This is going to allow us to see that full block of data that we're getting from our use query here. All right, so now we can go back over to app.js and import the cart we just made. So scroll up to the top of app.js and then you're going to want to import cart from dot slash cart. So I want the cart to be under the welcome to my store. So I'm going to add the cart component right here. All right, let's go to localhost 3000 and see the changes. All right, so ignore this annoying warning for now, but we can see that we actually have our cart.js query here showing that we have no items in our cart, which is true. Now we can go and turn all these different store items into real items we can put into our cart. So let's make a store item.js component. We can start by going over to the source and saying store item.js. This is a good example of some different functionality. So that's why I really enjoy this video and the topics I'm showing here is because I'm giving you guys another perspective where we instead import directly the value we have in our cache. For example, we can import the cart items variable from our cache. And so we can add things to our cart, delete things from our cart, all because importantly in our cache.js, we exported this cart items var. In order to use a reactive variable, which is cart items var is a reactive variable, we can import use reactive variable from Apollo client. So I'm going to import the button, the grid item, and then I'm also going to import the text. 
from at chakra UI slash react. So I'm going to create the function here. I'm going to call it store item. I'm going to export default store item. So before we get started with creating this actual store item, I'm going to show you guys how we can pass in the item object as a property. So I'm going to make a very simple application here to start. And I'm going to say console.log item. And I'm just going to return hello. Like it doesn't even matter what I return, just so React doesn't yell at me. And if we go over to our app.js, and then we go and import our store item component we just made, we can instead go down to where we are mapping through the items and we can put in the store item component here. So we can say for every single item in the array, we want to make it a store item component. We can set the item property equal to the item that we're currently mapping through. This is what gives us access to this item block. And just to give an example, an example item block would be something like this. This is a block of data that we would see and we would pass in to our store item component. So if we look at our console.logs, because if we go back to store items here, it should console.log four different items. So let's go check that out at localhost 3000. Amazing. So you'll see our store items have been reduced to four different hellos with no styling, but that's okay. You can see that this store item.js is we're able to see all the information of each block of data inside of the store item component, which is pretty cool. Inside of our store item component, something that we did in the beginning of the video was we had a button. And the button works like this. If the item was in the cart, show remove from cart on the button. But if the item was not in the cart, show add to cart. That's the functionality that we're going to show here alongside, you know, making all the front end stuff. And so look at this part in the cart versus not in the cart. We need access to the cart itself. And so we can say const cart items is equal to use reactive var and then pass in the reactive variable. For example, cart items variable. This allows us to work with the reactive variable here. I'm also going to use a const ID is equal to item dot ID. This is just to simplify some of the code later on. And so we can actually code the functionality to see if a certain item is in our cart. We can say let is in cart is equal to the cart items, which is going to give, give us access to what is actually inside of the cart items variable. So this is going to be an array of objects if there are items in there. And so we can use dot sum to determine, is there an item inside of our cart that matches a certain condition? And so we can loop through each item. So this item I'm saying right here is actually going to be the item we're looping through. And so for this specific item in our cart items, you could imagine there's one, two, three different ones in there. Is that current items ID equal to the ID we currently have? So this is saying, check if an item in the cart matches our item that this component is showing that the store item is trying to represent. Because remember, if it is in the cart, remove it. We want to show remove from cart. If it's not, we want to show add to cart. And so this is going to allow us to make some cool logic. I'm going to start by working on our component now. So I'm going to make it a grid item. I'm going to give it a background of blue dot 700. And it's also going to have some padding. I'm going to make it padding of four. I'm going to make a couple different texts here that are going to represent the values of the item. For example, item dot name. We want to show the name of the item. We also want to make another text block that I'm going to make font size is equal to extra small. And this is going to represent the description. I'm going to make another text block that is then going to represent the price. So we actually store the price as an integer. If we go over to our app.js, you'll see price is stored as an integer like this. For this video, I'm going to make a little price is equal to dollar sign dot zero zero. And so since this is going to be item dot price, you can imagine this is going to become like 15 dot zero zero if the price is 15, for example. So just like you'd see on a web page, we have the name of the item, the description, and also the price. Then at the very bottom, we're going to have a button. And so this button's interesting because and so when we click on this button, we either want to add to the cart or remove from the cart. And so what we can do is some very interesting logic. So we can make an onclick function that allows us to 
pretty much either add the item to the cart or remove the item from the cart. So we're not gonna have any parameters here. So we can just do an empty parameters, make the era function here. Then we're doing curly braces because we want to define JavaScript code now. And we can directly manipulate the reactive variable we took from our cache. So we can say cart items var. I want to set it to a new value. And so we can do some very interesting ternary logic here again, is in cart. Then I'm gonna do a little question mark here and a colon. Question mark means that the item is in the cart. So if the item is in the cart, that means you want to remove it. So we can actually make one button that has two different uses instead of having to make like an if else with two different buttons. So if the item is in the cart, what do we wanna do? We want to then set cart items var equal to the cart items dot filter, which is gonna take the current array that is in the reactive variable. And we want to go through each item in the array. And we want to say, okay, does the current items ID not equal the ID we have of this current store item? Because think of it like this. If I have an array, it's one comma two comma three, and I'm looking for one, or a better example, I'm looking for three. I'm going to say, is one not equal to three? Yeah, that's true. And so this is the filter. Look at this. I'll do the filter to run the other side. Start it. Okay. So one gets filtered. One isn't equal to three. So it gets filtered through. Is two not equal to three? Yeah, that's true. So we can filter that one too. Is three not equal to three? That's false. And so what's going to happen is after this filter happens, we're only going to have one and two left over. Hopefully that is a decent explanation, but I can also do videos on filters and a bunch of array stuff later, but that's kind of what's happening for our case here. And so if the cart items is not in the cart, we can do a spread operator like this. We can say dot, dot, dot over cart items. So take everything that is already in the cart items array, comma, and also add our current item object. And so we're just adding the item to the other items in the cart is a simple way to think of this syntax here. We can also do a ternary operator saying, okay, is in cart. If this is true, then we want this button to say, remove from cart. If is in cart is false, then we want it to say, okay, it's not in our cart. We want to add to cart. And I'm also gonna style these buttons a bit too. So I'm gonna say size is equal to extra small, text color is equal to black. So now we're going to have actual components representing all those different items in our store. Let's go back to localhost 3000. All right, guys, so congratulations. We have made a cart system using Apollo clients. I'm going to be doing a full e-commerce shop with Stripe, with this Apollo client, except it's gonna be more advanced. You can have multiple items. You can remove items from your cart. You can remove items from different places. It's gonna be super cool. So if you're interested in content like that, feel free to subscribe. But this video should have been a great introductory lesson to Apollo Client and understanding all the different ways we can work with Apollo Client to create really amazing applications. Although it may seem like a simple application or it's not even that much going on, there is a lot of cool stuff going on here. And I think something that I really personally like about this application is not only are we manipulating the cache itself, we're also using that cache data inside of our card variables to make unique logic in our store item components. Like I think it's really cool that this remove from card goes to add to card, for example. All right, thanks so much for watching.